Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Branders Podcast. I'm your host, Arab, along with my co-host, Edwin. And today, we have on a guest that you might have heard of, whether you're watching the NFL or you're watching Fortnite, Twitch, or Warzone. Anyways, he's all over the place. A professional football player who's also a signed gamer. Not, not often do you hear that nowadays. You know, you hear people owning orgs. You hear people investing, etc., but... Never do you hear the actual pro gamer. Yeah, I actually found you, Kurt, uh, back fucking like two years ago. You were practicing competitive Fortnite, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. I've been I've been grinding for a minute. I had to take a step back from Fortnite, but I'm kind of getting back a little bit. So it's been it's been fun, man. I do a bunch of different stuff. Kurt, Ben, Kurt, welcome to the fucking podcast. Uh, hey, it's a pleasure to have you here. Oh, uh, we got a screaming baby in the background, so we're good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, can, appreciate can you, you guys having me. Can you mute it, or is that not Dude, possible? There's not a fucking mute, mute button for that thing. Yeah, that's why oh, I don't want to become a dad yet, bro. <laughs> yeah, mm. save it, save it. She's Yo, awesome. speaking speaking of dads, we were talking about this before the podcast. Like he heard of you from competitive Fortnite. I mm. I started seeing who you were because of my my friend American dad. Yes. And uh, how did you how did you end up meeting him? Dude, I don't know where I stumbled across this shit, but um, I kept seeing like a little bit of like tidbits of what he's all about, and then I saw his uh his Amazon package video. Uh, yeah, like, yeah, this, yeah, is, yeah. this is yeah. funny as fuck and then i started following him and then i popped on his streams from time to time but like i just love how he doesn't give a shit and he just has fun and kind of does his thing so that's kind of like that's my kind of guy man you know he's part of brand risk <laughs> yeah. i did not know that that's awesome yeah so like we yeah. i mean we got a little collective going on obviously like we, we're on the podcast and shit but we have the few homies that stand for the same yeah. thing that you know yeah. And, and you know, it's funny, whenever we have them on the podcast, it's usually like when we've already had the person on one time and then they yeah. come back on. So like if we do another one with you, we should definitely have him on. Bro, I mean, I wish, I wish I knew they were homies because then I would have just Dude. told Eddie to come on this one. Yeah, he's, yeah, true, true, true. he's like the, uh, you know, in Joe Rogan, how he's got that dude that the, the, the fat dude, sorry to say it that way, but you know, the fat Bert. is that who it is? Is it Bert Kreischer? Is that who's always on? Yeah. Yeah. There's him there's and then there's a different one. There's Nick something, right? Uh, he, he, Guerrero or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's got two people that are just on random times. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. That's AD on here. Uh, Kurt, so you're fucking, yeah. you're a professional NFL player, quarterback yeah. for the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, shit's you, dope. You left the Falcons, <laughs> so uh, you know it's all right. I'll let you fucking, I'll let you off the hook for that one because I'm an Atlanta native, you know. Look, but, man, uh, things are way better on the other side. Yeah. Way better on the other side. I'm <laughs> loving it right now. How hey, is, that's all that matters, baby. That's it, man. How is that? How's that whole process of like, dude, you grinded it out through high school and shit and yeah. you get signed to the NFL. What? How does that feel? Yeah. Dude, it's like, like, it's just a lot of like random things that have to line up. Cause there are plenty of guys that were like just as good as me. Some that were better that didn't make it. Like, and it just kind of like, you have to have so much go your way and you just kind of know adversity is going to come and you just kind of, just kind of keep going. Like just like streaming, you have like your down days and stuff. It's very similar where really? the guy is at the top. Like it wasn't just smooth sailing getting there. Um, and I just, it's just kind of crazy that I'm living the dream, man. It's nuts. But living the dream. <laughs> yeah. But like when, when you're in college and you're and you know, you're killing it, whatever, like making it to college is one thing, making yeah. it to the NFL draft. How, how's that journey? Like, how does that feel? yeah uh, th obviously you know you you have to work your ass off you have to yeah. consistently be the top what's the, like your fitness regimen what's your yeah so it's kind of crazy like my first year in the nfl i was a rookie and like i played a bunch of video games and stuff on the oh, side how if you're a rookie in so, your like, first year <laughs> yeah so exactly but anyways my like i was afraid to tell people like what my interests were and like what i was into off the field because the stigma i mean it was like gaming 2018. is a cool they're like, gaming's not cool. If you play video games on the side, you probably don't give a fuck about like football as much as you should. And you don't take things seriously. But for me, it was like, I don't even play video games just to play them. Like I love competitively playing them. So like I'm always organized and like, it's just, there was a stigma in gaming that I think has changed. And so after my, my rookie year, I was like, dude, I'm just going to start telling people that I do this. I popped on a camera and I was able to kind of show people that, look, you can take both things seriously and time away from football is a good thing. Um, when I was younger, dude, like all throughout college, I just, I killed myself in the weight room. Like I just was kind of just doing way too much. And I was burnt out by the time, like halfway through the season came along. And now that I have a little more balance in my life, like I, I really look forward to going to football every day, going to work and stuff. And then I have my downtime away from it. Like balances everything. And it I'm makes like, you really love other things more. 
dude yeah, yeah it's it's everything do you I uh mean, go ahead I was just saying, I, I think balance in life is, is very important. I think that when you do take time away from something that you're passionate from, you actually yeah. get more passionate about it because you miss totally. it. You know I mean? Totally. Do, do you, did you like gaming <clears throat> in college as well? I loved it, dude. I used to play game battles and stuff growing up, like all throughout high school. And like, I mean, I was, I was into this shit, like really heavy. Damn, I played game, um, game battles. That's crazy. You're really yeah, good if you're playing game dude. battles. Yeah, I had a group of friends that I was grinding GBs on the Call of Duty with, and I really didn't tell anybody about it because I didn't want them to think I didn't take football seriously. But, like, I was excelling at football and, like, one of the best, and then I was, like, on my team and stuff. Because that's the stigma. So, yeah, that's the stigma. That but, if you're gaming, you're not spending time on other shit. Yeah, so I feel like the way I compare it is, like, for all the time that guys would just be, like, binging Netflix or going out and partying. That's like, what I was, I was about to say, a, bro. Yeah. I was on a Friday night, like grinding GVs with friends while all my teammates were out partying. Like it just, it was what it That's was. That's so, so cool. Yeah. I was about to say that. Cause like they all go and watch Netflix and spend fucking hours on Netflix, but then you go yeah, spend a few hours on gaming and now all of a sudden like, yeah. Oh, you're wasting time. Yeah. When really exactly. they're not, they're not working their mind. You actually are too. Like I'm, I'm not saying that's the argument that I use, but like, you know, if you're yeah. comparing Netflix to fucking gaming, like at least yeah. it's teaching me problem solving. Dude, I was just, yeah, I was right yeah. in my brain, like problem solving, like thinking on your feet critically and like yeah. communication, dude. Like I can talk to anyone of any walk of life and like we can have a legitimate conversation and get shit done. Whereas like there's just so many people that can't in my yeah, industry. Yeah, you can just, network over gaming too, bro. bro. Yeah, yeah. Like the yeah, only reason we're here right now is because yeah. two years ago when I was grinding competitive and I was yeah. learning to play competitive, I saw a fucking random dude that didn't have a gamer tag. It was a full fucking name and he yeah. had like a priority role which was being able to host and it was you. And I was like, why the fuck is this random dude? <laughs> and you had like a profile picture of a uh, football or something. I was like, let me, yeah. let me look him up. Let me look. Cause it was like me and a few other competitive players hosting these like practice scrims. Yeah. A and then all of a sudden I see at fucking 2 AM, Kurt Benkert is playing. And I was like, who's this? And I Google, I was like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, why the dude. fuck is there an NFL QB bro, playing yeah. Atlantis scrims right now? Dude, yeah, bro. bro. Isn't it so funny that like you can tell when somebody's like like has their full name, you're like that that's that looks wrong. You're like, yeah. what the fuck? Yeah. Like you just dox yourself. That's hilarious. Bro, yeah, it's it's been like like I tell people all the time, like I love football and obviously like it's it's like a part of me that will always be there. But I love having something outside of it to look forward to and to meet new people outside of like the realm of every day and like it's just, it's a whole different vibe of people that you run into. And most of the people in the gaming industry are like-minded. Like if we're on the same track of like trying to make content and like be consistent and have schedules, like there are a lot of people that are like-minded and want all the same things where in football, like you don't necessarily know what the person's going to be into. Like this, it's a, you never Bro, know, but. I really wish your schedule lined up with hours in the morning. Cause we've been streaming a dude, lot of mornings. Yeah. It's, so, it's such a blast playing. Count yeah. me in, count me in, in the off season. Cause like this. So this past off season when I got signed to Ghost and stuff, like I was grinding games a lot, but I was on like a nighttime schedule. And now like I have like with the newborn and stuff, like she's a year old now, yeah, so we're on a little bit better really. schedule. But yeah, dude, I'm like I'm like ready to go in the morning. We're up so early, like it's I don't know. What's that's kind of like my my grind. What, what's your preferred game right now? Is it Fortnite? Uh, it's Fortnite, and then I've pretty much done playing Warzone. I've been playing Halo, uh, Master Chief Collection. Dude, too. Hey, dude, my man. Dude, I want to say yeah. this. I yeah. want to say you should totally. Depending if it if it comes out while you're in the off season or not, yeah. we're gonna grind out the new Halo yeah. on, 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 like, on bro, legendary. Listen, we're gonna listen, grind dude, out listen. the story mode as soon yeah. as it comes out for like three days dude, straight, I, bro. I, yeah. I want you to know that Halo is the only reason I like that that game is the game that got yep. me into like multiplayer competitive dude, gameplay. Same dude. here. Dude, it was yes. it was it was Halo two and I was in summer camp and I remember I was like, This game Bucks, because we were like all like yep. trying to play with each other like like you had to take turns and shit yep. i had a playstation 2 because i wanted to play ratchet and clank yep. i traded that pinch for i traded that bitch in for an xbox and, and halo yep. 2 as soon as i could dude. and the thing is like dude when i was like in seventh grade i would i would skip meals i would skip meals yep. to grind halo dude it, it, it was sick and bro, um go ahead. i love it no i'm i'm listening bro you're good uh i was gonna say bro I, it's funny because i actually checked out your account like a few days ago and, yeah. and i saw you in the master chief fucking yep. outfit that shit was bro. fire dude so like halo same thing bro so like that's the thing like we're all from different walks of life all doing like crazy different things and we all fucking grinded halo back in the day like we like we all were into the same shit and that's the thing that like i think people miss with gaming it brings so many people together dude, but, yeah. like you i didn't have i had a ps2 so 
I had a PS2 and the only game I had was Madden. Like my parents didn't like we had sports games. That was about it. But um, my neighbors next door, they had a garage that their whole setup was in. They had like their Xboxes uh... and shit. Bro, they gave me the pin code to their garage and I would be in there before they woke up grinding Halo 2 on their shit because I didn't have it. That's so, so like, sick, bro. Bro, like I, I loved Halo. That was the first game that I got into like bro, that. Dude, dude, like, listen. Oh my God. I think you can so relate to this memory. Do you yeah. remember? Do you, dude, I, I used to I used to be a, a a lone wolf slave, dude. I used to just play lone wolves yes. until the fucking sun came up. But listen, <laughs> I remember how mad I would be if I was like a, a I was like a brigadier general. I was like level forty five, and I was grinding to get to the at least the one star <laughs> yep. general. And yep. you have to win like fucking seven games in a row to get up one, right? Yes. And if you lose one, you actually lose a fucking level, oh. bro. I would get so fucking mad if I came in <laughs> second place because that meant like. Uh, all yep. this shit was for nothing, bro. It, oh my there, God. There's like beauty in their ranking system to where it was so simple, bro. You got to keep winning if you're going to rank up. And like one one loss was devastating the higher you yeah. get. And yeah. like that was my first time like really like loving competitive, I think was um it was like ranked SWAT or some shit. Like yeah. I used to love SWAT. Like that was my yeah. that was my playlist. Yeah. SWAT, SWAT was sick. And, and you, you know also I remember? I remember uh that was my first introduction into people smurfing because it, yeah. it got... It got harder to rank up the more you played, but if you were just really good on a brand new account, you get to level fifty yes. five star general like easy as hell. And yeah. I was always so pissed. I was like, you don't earn like you don't deserve this. Yeah. Because I was I was on my OG I never smurfed. I was on my OG account to the day I died, dude. Do you That's remember so the name? Yeah, it was uh it was Venom. My my Venom. my first my first username in the gaming world ever was Venom. Yeah. I love what it. was yours? I had a few, but my very first was XXYX. So X, <laughs> serious XX. Right after, oh, right after that, uh, the Dark Knight or whatever the fuck it was. Oh yeah, that was yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was before MLG names. Dude, my Damn. my first name or like the name I used to play as my brother. No, your your for your personal my first name actual... that you thought to yourself. What? So my first name ever was on RuneScape, and that was it was kill Ooh. it was Killanoob. Pure is what you played RuneScape before. Bro, there, let me show you something, man. <laughs> he's got RuneScape mobile. No way. Tell me you got bro. RuneScape mobile, bro. Tell me you got OSRS on your fucking. Hey, there it is. There bro, it is. I'll man. log in. I'll log in right now, dude. Like I'm telling you, dude, I, Yeah. Mine was so my first ever like name on that. And so there were there was something called a pure, and it was like you were you didn't raise your defense, and you were just yep. yeah. So it was, it was just called Kill a Noob Pure, and I took it off my friend who had Kill a Noob. And then, I so that it. was my first name. I think, and then I had Sharp Tip 101. That was my second name, or might have been my first. <laughs> I don't know why. It was. That's awesome. <laughs> but then my, my actual gamer tag, like, I used to play on my brother's shit, but then when I eventually, in like eighth grade, when I got my own PS, mm -hmm. my PlayStation, it was Icy Knife. And it Icy was, Damn, I was okay. like, this sounds yeah. hard. I was like, this sounds were, hard. Icy knife yeah. is kind of hard. But it wasn't yeah. just Icy knife, bro. It was IC3Y. KN1F3. Uh, so it had the you numbers. Won't bring, you won't bring it back for a week on Fortnite. <laughs> that'd be Dude, that'd be sick. <laughs> hey, I hey, should, um, that'd be a good tweet. You could tweet out, like, <laughs> change my Fortnite name to my first gamers I reckon. Like, let's, let's yeah. start a trend, you know? Everyone change yeah, their hey. names. You heard it on brand risk. Yeah, I have a, I have another, I have another hidden memory that maybe I don't know if you got into into Halo at like this hard, but do you remember what HLG was? Did you ever hear about any of that shit? It was, it was, like, it was a, a spinoff of MLG. HLG were the kids that would exploit outside of the map, and so basically the whole premise was to queue into a duo game, and it was uh -huh. like you, you and your homie versus like two Hacker other people. Life gaming is that what it was? No, 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 no. You'd kill, you'd kill them one time. You'd get one kill, and then you'd 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 exploit out of the map and just hide the entire game. It was called hi hiding league oh gamers. Oh my or something. god! It was like, but it was like a little community, bro. And like they'd they'd have videos and shit of like how to exploit out of maps, dude. And people would get so and Halo? fucking mad. <laughs> yeah, bro. dude. The me the messages I would get were were poetry, dude. It was crazy. Because those games are long, bro. Like, yeah, they are. Yeah, <laughs> they're looking, and the maps are big. Even in duos, bro. The maps. Some of the yeah. maps they put you on are like like full big team maps. Yeah, like, yeah. Bro, For that's sure. so funny. Did you ever play Gears yeah. of War, Kurt? I my neighbors did, but I never did. I used to watch them. I was play. a big Gears of War, but Halo Three. Yeah. Halo Three was the first ever campaign I beat. 
God, was... I can hear the music in my head. I can see the fucking yeah. final drive, bro, to the jump. Like, I can bro, see yeah, it. the bro. jump, the jump. Yeah. Bro, yeah. you know what I remember specifically from Halo 3? The there Arbiter. Was, there was a fucking, yeah. is it, it's a skull, right? You connect, you collect the skulls. skulls. There was yeah, a skull like... on the left of a bridge. As you're crossing, you have to go down and like into the bridge and there's a skull. And I remember that specifically, I don't know why. But it was the first ever game I beat, because I hate, I hate story modes. I hate them too. And I love multiplayer, but, yeah. but no, but yeah. you could play that multiplayer. Any yep. story mode that you could play multiplayer, I was always down for. Because, like, gaming yeah. was never about beating a story yeah. mode. What? It was about fucking... Yeah. Do you ever wonder Dude. how many of us, like, have played with each other before, probably, like, 10 years ago? Like, in a no, game? Yeah, that's you know, like, funny. That's how, actually funny. What are the funny. chances of that? Like, it... <laughs> Because the community was way smaller. I mean, obviously those games were like yeah. huge, but you're playing fucking ten hours a day as like a kid. Like we gotta I mean, have ran into each we're other. We're running once, into bro. each other. Like we're right? running into each other in Fortnite with way more player base. Exactly. We had, we, you had to have exploited on me, bro. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, dude. Listen, yeah. let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you a story about coming coming up out the mud. All right. So my sister. Like she, she moved out. Like had had her mm -hmm. fiance, whatever. She moved out. I was like, eight. I was like, dude, like. I must have been like 12 or something. It was like right when like I, I got an Xbox. I I was trying to get Xbox Live, but like my parents yeah. wouldn't get it, let me get it yet. I don't think I don't think we had internet at my house. So I would go I would go to my sister's house because she was out of town and 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 me and my dad would go to her house to just make sure everything's fine, feed the dog, whatever. Uh, while I was there, I hopped on her computer and this oh, yeah. is like, dude, this is when YouTube was like barely YouTube. This is like when funnyjunk.com was like still a thing, right? <laughs> yeah. And uh and yeah, I'd I'm search up like I don't know what that is, dude. I'd search I'd search up shit about Halo. I'd, I'd search up like Halo shit, and I'd have a I'd have a little uh, uh a little notepad, and I'd write wow. down like the <laughs> shit that they were telling me, and I'd go home and try it myself. I'd get like a step wrong. I'm like, fuck, what did he say in that stupid video again? Oh, that's awesome. Dude. Yeah, like, I used to love that game, bro. God, dude. how different like how how different video games are now, and like yeah. You had to like really search for this shit to get mm -hmm. answers. Where now it's like you can just get a full walkthrough on YouTube. But like, bro, yeah. we, we we had like walkthrough books for some of these games. Like, yes, just don't understand. I was yes. about to say that, dude. That's that was yeah. my next thing. I was waiting for you to finish so I could say, do you guys remember the fucking books, bro? bro yeah, they were yeah. this yeah. thick, bro. They were this bro. thick fucking books you get from EV Games. <laughs> Yes, bro. Yeah. If you if you had the books, your parents were rich. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Uh, for real. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, dude. dude awesome. last, la, last Halo memorabilia thing that I'm gonna mention, dude. There's yeah. this one part in Halo 2, and it was so fucking hard to get, dude, because you had to like steal a banshee from an AI, and it was just impossibly hard. And I did it. And you fly to this one part, and you find a skull, and you pick up the skull, and then it drops like a a plasma rifle, and you pick it up, and it shoots a scarab. Like you remember, like the tank. The, oh, the, I, I think I can the, picture this map. It's like the the long four legs. Right? Yeah. Like well, no, no, no. It was the uh, oh fuck. Is that no? It was the um. Was it called a wraith? Maybe a wraith. No, a wraith a, is the like wraith the tank. tank. Yeah, yeah, the tank. The scarab was the big one. Yeah. Oh, so trust me. Would, I got my my scarab. It would shoot like ghost. All it would shit. shoot. It would shoot a wraith like tank tank like uh like shot out of yeah. a, a plasma rifle that was just on the ground and like it was funny because like you got it you're like no fucking way i got it and then you're like shooting it around the map but you can't even get back into the game because you already exploited so far out of the map so it was like funny. pointless and shit but anyways dude i just have so many memories of wasting so much time on that game bro i'm so dude you know the new one's coming out end of this year yeah. right like so it, what do you know the date of it you know the date holiday. of your off season so my my off season starts um like most likely early february like for like first second week of february oh, but that's i have so like late. it's so late but i have like a guaranteed monday night off days i have tuesdays completely off i mean i got sundays if it's a home game off. like i have sunday time, monday like, tuesday yeah. just grind it out and fucking no, no doubt like it comes out it comes yeah. out this holiday season like like this christmas we time play it by year bro we play it by yeah, year whenever yeah, yeah. it comes I out love that shit. obviously got to be the first to fucking stream it you know like have that to, it'll have the bro, hype previews that'd be sick previews. just having a bunch of fucking Homies playing it on legendary, dude. No doubt, getting those solid, are man. that's like the best. That's the best part of video games, dude. So, Kurt, you're how old? I am 26 as of a few days ago. Damn, you're young. Nice, yeah, yeah I'm pretty yeah. young. Edwin's older than you. How old are you? Yeah, 26 as well. 20, yeah, but he's turning yeah. 27 in a, in, a, in a month or two. Nice, and yeah. how old are you? In two in months. October. That's two months. Yeah. It's two months, yeah. He's, 20, he's 24. Were you 24? 24? I'm 24, yeah. Gotcha. I don't even have the beard, bro. Like you look older. <laughs> Dude, I'm Middle Eastern. You you can't count it. I shaved my yeah. eyebrows and they were back in three weeks. 
Like, <laughs> um, yeah, Yo, you're right. It, wait, it is. Wait, is it two months? Yes, wait. your birthday's in two months. Two months and a week. Yeah, three months. It's the thirtieth. What? Oh, so okay. Okay, yeah, true. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, fuck me. Um, yeah, dude. Anyways, congrats. First of all, being 26 and like, it, you you forget that these professional athletes are your age. I yeah. guess now that we're fucking old. <laughs> Compared to all the kids that you guys are. Dude, running to, are right? you are you are you older for your profession or are you younger for your profession? Um, I'm a young as far as quarterbacks go. Like like quarterbacks are one of the positions that like I mean Tom Brady's playing at like 42, 43 or whatever the hell he is. But then yeah. There's other positions that, like, by the time they're 28 or 29, like, their careers are kind of, like, on the downward. They're out. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Play linebackers, yeah. linemen, shit like that. Yeah, running backs, linebackers. Because they get hit all day. Probably it, it's yeah, stressful yeah. to the body, bro. Bro, that yeah. was my favorite position when I played football, though, linebacker. It was so brain dead, but, like, so much fun. Brain dead. Did I? Yeah. It's, I played it when I was younger. In, like, seventh grade, I had to switch to just playing quarterback. Like, that's what they wanted yeah. me to do. And I guess shit worked out, but I loved linebacker. Hey, uh, what's your least favorite position? Uh, Missionary. probably oh. yeah yeah i mean boring <laughs> but i'm just kidding um <laughs> uh probably lineman dude i don't know how the hell those guys do it yeah yeah like, yeah especially like in college when you're not getting paid for it like holy shit like yeah. if i was a lineman i probably wouldn't be playing anymore uh, it's probably like, like a like a like a pride strength thing you know yeah. like people I mean, like that are, are like yeah people bro. like that They're are like yeah huge. i'm fucking like it's like the alpha yeah, and they like they just stick with their pack. Like these, like they're all yeah. like weird in their own way, like a little yeah. liming group. But so, they they're very proud, like proud, proud. So before be before we come crew. back into football, because I have one last question about this gaming <clears throat> thing. What was like mm -hmm. the first game you remember playing that like got you into really into gaming? Um, my first game it had to have been uh shit N sixty four. Um, I loved Super Smash Brothers on N sixty four, but I mm, think the first. Man. Like, yeah, the first shooter was probably um fuck was it Goldeneye or whatever the hell that was. Yeah, oh, that, yeah. Is that the 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 007? 007. 007. Yeah. I mean, you had to pick bro, up guns I remember. On the and shit. Bro, yeah, I remember that yeah. game. I remember a specific map where you're inside this like vault area and there's an upper level of like just like metal overview and then there's a little inside it's a gray map. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but dude, that was a great game. Yeah, it was. I think that was the first one where people were like, "Yo, like these shooters are fun." Like, yeah, it's, it kind of, it kind of gave me Halo vibes, minus like the futuristic shit. If we go back yeah, to it, how yeah. shit it is, how how shit uh, is it? You think, like, dude? But you know what's crazy? You go back to it now, you're like, "Whoa, this looks like dog shit." But back yeah. in the day, no, that's you what never, I'm you never thought that. Back in one the day, time. we thought it was as good as it as this shit yeah, is right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was watching like early 2000s YouTube videos today for on like music, just like fucking around. My wife and I were doing shit and I put on like uh, three doors down kryptonite. And this video was Great like song, bro. Like, but the video was like maybe 10 frames. Like, like this thing, this thing was so old and so blurry. You couldn't even like see people's face. And I'm like, my car has a better camera than like these YouTube videos. Where you're yeah. Putting yeah. You know, like it's crazy. When was the last time you played smash? uh in college we had oh, a, God, we had a few friends, bro. <laughs> yeah we had a we had a few friends in that had like uh the n64s bro he had like yeah. his four controllers a bunch of games and that's kind of if we weren't a, playing xbox that's what we were doing Edwin's a god i'm a i'm a, I'm a smash loser too i He's love a god. that game there's dude. nothing wrong with yeah. that bro. he gets off stream yeah. bro and he plays against the sweats online and like just to get better so like when people that's come awesome. over when get if you ever come over he'll make sure that he that he shits on you and smash just to say you guys like, are in florida right and you said in yeah yeah, yeah. I'm gonna be going down probably for like ten to fifteen days this off season. My wife's mom lives down there, so I have to come around. February, out. right? Oh, please do, please Hell do. yeah, bro. Hell yeah, we'll yeah, go out please and do shit. That'd be so sick. We'll vlog. We'll go kick it. Yeah, that's awesome. Count um, me in. so so on that note, I listen to this. I'm a great podcast host because this shift is so gaming, right? Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. Right. That was nasty. That was good. Wow. Um, you started streaming when you were in the NFL. Mm -hmm. do you think that if the ncaa hadn't ha, ha, didn't have those rules that it just switched that you yeah. would be huge on twitch by now because you would have probably would you have started in college yeah i would have started in college i i would say i'm like a i'm like behind the eight ball because i wasn't like a trevor lawrence or like a huge name guy coming out but like people knew me as like the nfl guy that was like 
above average pretty good at video games like for being an nfl guy mm -hmm. and so i could have like i started marketing myself as that late but if i had that shit in college dude like and it's much easier in college dude it's so much easier because i was like the face of like not the face but like i was the the quarterback at virginia like that's every like that's just i was the guy so yeah. i could have used two years of that to like build my platform and like i would have had more of a like it's it's hard to build something when you're out of it mm -hmm. whereas if you're in it you can like use the local restaurants and like you can get local sponsorships and shit to like sponsor yeah. my stream and but once you're out of it you're like the guy that was at virginia and there's a new guy right now yeah so, yeah exactly yeah. so it's kind of similar to like nfl quarterbacks like nobody really talks about peyton manning anymore but he got it while he was in it like commercials and stuff so yeah. i just think like it would have been easier to get a better platform to get started um i don't know it's i'm i went to grad school for this um like studying higher education athletic administration all that shit so i had a, like crazy arguments about this in school of why athletes needed to be paid needed to be able to use their likeness and all this stuff so it's cool it's happening now but i missed the eight ball on that shit pretty heavy dude, it dude hit, like I, right I, after you got out huh right i after. can't i can't believe it took that long bro i always thought that there was <clears> a bit of an injustice in the fact yeah. that you know, these dudes are, are sacrificing their entire lives for this. And like the college is making money off the merch. They're making yeah. money off their likenesses and stuff like that. You, you know why they changed it up, right? Like, like, um, uh, I think like, so I know it had to do with destroying a little bit with YouTube. Yeah, um, correct, correct. So him and then like the, the, there's so much shit that goes on behind the scenes. That's like 20 years down the line going to come out when like some of these coaches that are in now aren't in anymore. So players can talk about it, but there's just so much shit behind the scenes that you're like, Bro was getting paid so much money to go here, but he couldn't say anything. And it's like, yeah. it's not happening at the small schools, but these, these big schools, dude, like, what do you mean couldn't say anything? Room, like, like, say, you're like, rec you're not really supposed to recruit. So, like, say I have, really... a, I have a teammate that's it that went to LSU, right? Mm -hmm. And he got paid X amount of money for doing whatever. Like, he'll never say who did it, who, who kind of helped set it up. But some of the coaches and things that are still like that kind of helped with those things or whatever are still coaching. So like they're not gonna they're not gonna say anything about it now. But when these guys in the NFL now like oh you're retire, saying like good things that are gonna come out. Oh no no yeah so like say say a player five years ago was getting cash under the table. Okay. Like he can't say it right now because oh okay yeah. so you're saying like coaches still in. coaches would pay people to so that way they would stay on the team and shit. So yeah, they wouldn't go like, to a better school local, or whatever. Local sponsorships, like mm. promises, all this shit that like that's against now NCAA. Is, now it's a little bit like some of that stuff is still legal, but it's not as illegal. But like nobody's gonna talk about it now because they're coaches that help them uh, out. Okay, are right, <clears throat> right, yeah, yeah. But wait, wait, fifty years down the line. So when it's shit like all things back. that'll help a coach's legacy. Like, yeah. dude, like he wasn't making fucking money and like we wanted to even and shit like that. Okay. I mean, I mean, I, I, I it, yeah, like it'll help their, their legacy maybe, but like, it'll, it'll be seen as like that. What they weren't supposed to be doing that like that, yeah. like, like that you're not supposed to do that at all. Like, for example, when I, when I played uh football in high school, there was this one school called plant and mm -hmm. they were fucking <laughs> elite dude. Yes. And no one understood why, because kids would like, you know, you hear about people going from one college to another because this college is better. They have a better program, this and that. Yep. There was no reason for kids to come out like out of state or out of county to go to that school, but they did. Yep. And it was because they were doing shit like that. And you're not supposed to even do that on a high school level at all. Yeah. You're not supposed to but, recruit. But like, here's my question. Like, yeah, they weren't supposed to be doing that. But we're saying like, it's a good thing that they were doing that. Is this so, similar? Like, yeah. would it be similar to like Harriet Tubman? You know, it was illegal to fucking to free slaves okay. you know it so was this, this and a, frank, it's a bit of a reach but and frank it so, was i know you get I what i'm you saying though you know what i'm saying like it was I, bad so, at the time obviously it's not fucking like yeah, the, so you know i would say it's a good like say okay let me just throw a random thing out say there's a player and a school that he's going to go to is lsu say this coach can say hey through so and so we can promise you that you will push 20 grand to your family a year just to help out because shit's not great at home so mm -hmm. over the course of four years, we can help your family out with ADK. Like that player who might now be in the NFL isn't right. going to go to the media and say, hey, LSU helped my family out. They gave my family ADK to help them through, help them get the games, help yeah. them travel to games, help them get all this shit because the people that were involved with that are still coaching. Uh -huh. So yeah. 20 to 30 years from now, when these coaches are retired and there's a new wave of coaches, like people will be able to talk about the shit that happened in the past 10, 15, 20 years because those people aren't involved anymore. But people are going to be like, like everyone knows that shit's going on. Yeah. But it's like, yeah. But it's, they it's can't like it's say anything about it. Yeah, it's like, because of the way like, the shitty like, rules are. 
Yeah. It's like it's like frowned upon too because some I feel like some some colleges don't do that and they're put at a disadvantage yeah. because of that. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Like they they don't do that and that kind of skews the the mm -hmm. the legitimacy of like actual how the competition Recruiting. works. Exactly. Yeah. So at Virginia, yeah. bro, I didn't get a damn thing. Like I got a hundred dollars underneath my tire one time after a game. It was five twenties <laughs> underneath my Jeep, and I was like, "Yo, this is the coolest shit in the world." I just got a hundred bucks. But meanwhile, like across yeah. the country, these dudes like. And now, what's his name? Um, Peyton Manning's uh, nephew, his name's Archie Manning. So yeah. I want to say he's got sponsorships lined up like in the millions. Like, dude, yeah. that, and that's what oh, it should have been. For sure. Oh, for sure, bro. You yeah. know what's crazy? As soon as the as soon as the NCAA released that people can get sponsorships now. Yeah. Um, do you know who Danny Duncan is? I'm I assuming. Don't. Well, he's a YouTuber, huge YouTuber, yeah. very, very, but very, yeah. very good businessman above anything. Like yeah. the one thing that I would, I would say about him is his content is, is, is five out of five, but yeah, his business sense is, is, is incredible because it doesn't matter. Um, and, and so as soon as the NCAA announced that the mm -hmm. next day he posts on a story, if you're, if you're a college athlete and want a sponsorship, let me know. And that's and awesome. he's gonna he's gonna like pay to have his logo on on people and shit and that's so smart, yep. bro. And it's people brilliant. are really gonna start, yeah. People are really gonna start hopping on that, you know. And, and bro, I think it's, it's, I think it's really cool. It pisses me off because I've had like we didn't have a great team when I was at Virginia, but we played against fucking Lamar Jackson when he was running for the Heisman. We played against Miami when they were number two in the country, and like you know how much I could have got paid to have a fucking logo on a glove or oh, like so a sleeve. Much Crazy, like, bro. Like I missed wait, can out they on put logos things? on gloves? So there are gloves now, like, um, I don't know if you know uh, Tyreek Hill, like, they call him Cheetah. Okay. So he does some stuff with destroying, but he has a glove that, like, on the inside of the glove, these two fingers, like, are, there's an image of them folded down. So it's, it's showing like this on the glove, even if he's like this. So that's like his trademark. Yeah. So now he has a brand of gloves that he pushes out. And so all these kids are buying these gloves. So, like, they're going to wear them in high school where it's not a logo, but you know that's his glove. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. 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 yeah it's, that's it's, that's you know, really cool. Art. Bro, Smart. you know who I you know who I miss in the scene, bro. I'm not I'm like and don't let me fool you. I'm not into football. Like I don't I don't yeah. I don't have like a team. Like I don't really keep up with it. Like this and that. You know, go Bucks, yeah. whatever. But um, I I miss Money Manzel, dude. He yeah. was a real character. And dude. I wonder if he, I wonder if he got any money, man. You bro, think? he he did. So if you go back, he was on um Bussin' with the Boys. The yeah yeah yeah. Podcast. I think he said he went into a room one time and. Somebody had him sign some shit. They were like, yo, we'll give you like three grand, four grand for it, whatever. And then somebody pulled him aside and was like, yo, there's somebody ex like so-and-so that'll actually pay you 30 grand for this. And that's when he started getting money on the side. Like, dude, dude made a lot of money off the field and he finally opened up about it. Like, a lot. What's up? What's up with him? Like, what, what the fuck's he doing now? Living life. <laughs> dude, like, he, got, he got too fucked up, man. He had too yeah, much fun. Way too much fun. But yeah. again, like, it's... I think the other thing is once you get in the NFL, like... You gotta really love it because this shit's long and hard. Like, there's the days are just they're monotonous. It's the same shit over and over again. Like, and it's not the the fun and glamour that is college, where you're not playing against the best of the best all the time. So you can do those things and like be just like head and shoulders above everyone else. Like, no matter what team you play against, even if they suck that year, they have good players that'll knock your head off. And yeah, it's like <laughs> yeah, right. and it's just hey. like. Yeah, I have a I have a really fun question. So so I don't know if you uh, this isn't the question, but you ever hear the the question? Where it's like who'd want to fight a gorilla or a grizzly bear, right? Yeah. You ever hear that? Yeah. Well, I have, I have a similar question, but it come it, it has to do with football, which is okay. the the absolute best football team of all fucking time, college, right? The best college football team ever. Yeah. Versus the absolute worst NFL team of all time, who wins that? I think the college team does. Mm. Really, I've I've heard the opposite. If you go like just of all times, it's yeah, of all time. Team. I was and thinking like other, Roll Tide. I was thinking like Alabama. Like the very best Alabama team of all time probably beats the very worst NFL team of all time, but not like two. on a year Say to year it. basis. Talk shit. I was I thinking mean, like the ja like the Jaguars. The Jaguars a couple of years ago. The the Browns for a long time. Like the, you got to think too. Like these. You think Al You think the best Alabama team beats those teams? If you look at who was on their roster, like even their fucking backups, like I want to uh -huh. say, like whatever the numbers, like sixty plus percent of their guys are like in the NFL and are dudes in the NFL, not just like like guys like me that are just filling a roster spot. Like I haven't made it. I haven't made it yet in terms of like playing, but yeah. like like Alabama doesn't just put guys in the league. They put fucking like studs. So yeah. like, 
like their their running back list the past few years when there was Derrick Henry, like Mark Ingram, like there was like probably four guys in this stable of running backs that are all studs. And it's like Yeah. It's, the, yeah, the, Alabama's different, bro. It's the it's the 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 anti argument to that was was everyone on a, a college football team is probably pretty good, but everyone on a professional football team got hand selected for being the best. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like that's the anti. But I never. Yeah. It's funny. You're the first person that's ever said the opposite. You're the first person that's ever answered the college team. I've seen some. I've seen some guys in the league that I'm like, I don't know how you're here, but then I've also <laughs> seen guys in college and I'm like, there's no way you're not gonna make the league, and they don't make it. So like. Hmm. there's i would say on average like the worst nfl team is going to be the best college team of that year but if you're going yeah. like of all time like yeah 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 know, it like, makes sense it may, of all yeah, time yeah. bro there's got to have yeah. been like some crazy good team there's got to been do, some crazy do you think shit it was team, alabama right? do you think it was alabama the best team of bro, all time it was them or it was like the 2000s miami team when they had like fucking 40 some dudes in the league in two years oh like, true. There, there was a miami hurricanes team that was like really their their roster's wild um what a shitty fucking name for a team but like also a good one miami <laughs> hurricanes <laughs> like, yeah. yo the miami hurricanes are gonna fuck us up wait which ones <laughs> hey, hey but wasn't that a good question i think that question that was, was pretty a good one. one. Yeah, as a good just one. a listener of that question that was a great question hey, hell yeah that's what i'm here well for. done well done um, thank you thank you so you're your second string qb uh i am fighting for third so well okay fight, nobody knows right now like so aaron Rodgers is there's a lot of stuff up in the air with him if he's gonna uh -huh. come back if he's gonna retire if he wants to get trained like nobody knows um we're all assuming he's just gonna come back and and be ready to go but i could be anywhere from number two to number three like okay how many are there we'll out. on a team right now uh there's like normally four like there's normally three guys on the roster and then one on practice squad when i was in atlanta I was number three for three years, but I was on practice squad because they didn't believe in like keeping three on the roster. It was just kind of like their philosophy. How, how so do you earn your way up and what's practice squad? So practice squad is like you do everything like you're on the team. You just don't get paid the same. So like I would get like a split contract mm. where it's just like a percentage of what the 53 would make. But the NFL, there's like um, there's just a bunch of different contract rules where like you can only have 53 guys on the team. Then you have like 10 to 15 reserve players that are practice squad. Mm. But week to week, you can pull a guy up from practice squad to make your roster 55. So it's just like, basically what that means, like last year I got pulled up for a game and instead of making like eight grand in a week, I made 30 grand in that week. Like, Whoa, for playing so, that much different. So Whoa. That much different. Yeah. So like making the 53 is crazy. Like it's a lot more money and stuff, but you also like. Now you you're part of the added. 53 though on the Packers. Um, so right now I am like, mm. it starts preseason as like everyone there's a 90 man roster and it gets cut down cut down cut down but this year like i'm more likely to make a like the 53 this year because the packers keep three normally mm. whereas atlanta was known they just keep two most of the time okay so i was yeah. kind of fighting an uphill battle against a future hall of famer and a guy that had been in the league for 17 years in atlanta so uh -huh. i just kind of knew yeah the rookie i knew that's again. where i was gonna be yeah so now i'm like i'm a little bit older i've played i'm healthy like this is my chance to legitimately compete is for that is that a common thing where people come out of college and they're the third qb and yeah, is it like so only like, the superstars that end up being like starting? Yep. Yep. So like Baker Mayfield, Justin Herbert, like Joe Burrow, some of these guys that are drafted. If you're drafted like first round, you're going to be on the 53 guaranteed. If you're drafted, but there's seven rounds in the draft. If you go fourth and above, you're probably going to guarantee yourself a 53 man spot. And then the rest of it is like, I was an undrafted guy, so I just missed it, but I signed a preferred deal after the draft. So like mm. they treated me like a draft pick, but it's yeah. just, if you're a young guy and you weren't a high priority, you'll be on the practice squad most likely. Um, and just kind of how it works. So, and so yeah. If you're straight out of college and you're like, uh, I'm assuming Tom Brady was, I guess, probably like a starter when he came out. Was he a starter when he came out? Or no, not so even. He was a, like a sixth or seventh round draft pick, not really? priority. Like was not a stud at all. Like he wasn't, he was an afterthought. Did he make 53? And I want to say his rookie year, I, I want to say he probably made the 53, but he was a, like, I want to say he was like second or third string and like a couple injuries happened and then he got propelled into the spotlight and he just That's played crazy. well. So like his yeah. career wow. happened on somebody's dude, broken dude. leg. Let's, let, let's, let's talk about something that I've always thought was so interesting. Yeah. Uh, you can go from being an absolute fucking stud in college, yeah. make it to the NFL and just fuck it all up, dude. Like, yeah. and, and, I, and I mean like, 
like, for example, Jameis Winston, yeah. right? Absolute superstar, right? Yeah. Makes it into the NFL. What is he doing now? So he had his first like four or five years with the Bucks. Like everyone knows, he threw a lot of interceptions. Like he he could have been great, stole but some, he stole some crabs. Yeah, like that should happen. Like I just think what he like, do? He stole crabs. What does yeah, that even mean? He, he like stole crab pub, legs like he, out he, of Publix or something. He, he went into a, he went into a Publix, grabbed crab legs, and then left. Why would you do that if you're in the NFL getting paid good money? So what like, is so that? that? How does happen? that make any so, sense? He had four or five years with the Bucks, and so was making really good money as a first round pick. And then he took like a hiatus here last year with the Saints. He was Drew Brees' backup, and it was just kind of like he's behind the scenes, kind of like trying to clean up his game because he's very much a gunslinger where like he'll throw 30 touchdowns, he'll throw 30 interceptions. It's just like you know that's what you're going to get. So last year was a year to learn like behind one of the best to ever do it. He tried to take a step back. He took less money for it. So if he was making like six or seven million a year, he took one million last year to be the backup. Um, and now Drew Brees retired. So now he's probably going to be the starter for the Saints. So like guys like him, I almost like you commend them because like he did not have the like the start to his career that he should have had as a high draft yeah, pick. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But he took a step back, cleaned it up. Yeah. But then there's guys like Manziel who... Manziel, that's the other one I was going to bring up. You never, other they one. never figure it out. So like... Dude, he... You just never he know, was, man. And he was, a, and he was like, I want to say like a superstar on a, on, a, in a, on a few levels, which was like he was good at what he did. And he was yeah. also really charismatic. Like people really liked yeah. him. Like people really yeah. like thought he was a, a cool character. But then, yeah, yep. he made it to the NFL and, and then he didn't do much, man. He, he yeah. from, from what I understood, I think the biggest thing, bro, like you got to think these guys in college have like a sun up to sundown schedule almost every single day that they have no free time. And so yeah. you give a, a guy like Jameis Winston, he's I think he was like 21 when he got drafted. Yeah. So you give him immediately. Uh, I want to say it was like 18 to 20 mil. Didn't yeah. play a down of football yet. So he got yeah. a lot of money up front. He's a multimillionaire in the NFL. And now he <laughs> doesn't have school. He doesn't have an extra like eight hours a day that he has to do for bullshit. Like it's just football, and, and then it's a lot of what, money, what, a lot of free time. What about what about Tim Tebow, bro? That was a weird situation. Oh, too. I remember yeah. hearing that name back in the day. So, did you know he's back now? He's playing a different Is, position. I thought he was a commentator. So he just got signed to the Jacksonville Jaguars as a tight end. Jaguars. He came out of retirement, and uh, he's playing tight end. But it's because um, the head coach for the Jaguars was his head coach in college. So 10 years uh, later, they uh, crossed paths in the NFL. This uh, is the dude's first year as an NFL So they coach. did play Call of Duty together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Really what, dude, the, the, I, I remember there was like a, a thing with him where like no one wanted to pick him up because of how religious he was. Like he was like, yeah. like was that, was that part of it? Because I, I think so, I heard some shit about that. It's like, so I would say the way that I put it is like a guy like him, he wasn't like he was a really good college player, but he was a below average NFL player. He just yeah. like his, the, the game is just different. Like you can't just plug and play people like the NFL. You have to have a quick release as a quarterback. You have to be able to move, which he can. But like throwing is primary. You can have somebody that can run and can't throw and he won't be able to play, but it'd be a good college player. So like he was on I'm Texas, better... right? What's that? Was he on Texas? Um, who Tim Tebow? Tebow? He played. No, he, was, for, he was on. He was on the Gators for for college. Yeah, yeah he played for the Gators, for Florida yeah. Gators yeah. in college. Um, but like you have a like so me, I'm a better NFL player than I was in college because like my attributes translate to the NFL game better than college. Um, but like it's it's just nuts, man. Like you just never know who's gonna pan out. You never know if like the timing with the coaching staff is gonna be good because not every coaching staff is good in the NFL. Everyone has different philosophies, like. You could pick up, you could put a guy in one place and he sucks, and you put a guy in another place and he's in like the Pro Bowl the next year. You just never know. Like, yeah, it's it's hard, man. I didn't I didn't know he was back in the game. That's that's interesting. Yeah. Yep. What's that? And it how's the like training work? And you know, you're yeah. saying you have no time in college. How's it in NFL? You know, you're able to balance streaming, having a kid, yeah. having a wife. So right now, like it's kind of, it depends on what point in the year, like right after the season, I take about a month off of training. I just do like light, like body weight stuff, but I get to do whatever I want. I could travel if I want to, I could stream all the time if I want to. Um, and then like leading up to April is like when we have our like short little off season program. So I just have to be kind of in shape by then. Like conditioning. Start, yeah. Start throwing a little bit more, like streaming goes down, that goes up. Um, and then I have like five weeks off, which I'm in right now. And towards the end of it, I start working out more. So like right now I'm five days a week working out. 
um it's pretty heavy conditioning like i'm i'm ready to play football what two hours a day three hours a day or how long like just a regular Um, hour like two hours two hours a day and um makes sense cardio and weights yeah so that's on top of throwing uh so throwing's after like throwing's an extra like 30 to 45 minutes but that's only like twice a week so it's more like getting my body ready being in shape i don't want to wear my arm out now and and then on top of that like maybe 30 to an hour of studying just kind of keeping fresh with the Mm -hmm. playbook Mm -hmm. um but like once we get started on tuesday it's like i get up at six in the morning i'm there at seven i get home at seven and it's like every day maybe one day off a week um and that's like go time but it's like training camp is what they call it you have like a month or so of that for preseason and that's like when you don't hear from guys like i won't be playing video games or anything but once the season starts like a typical week is we play on sunday we come in on monday and we do like a little lift a little meeting like we're in maybe four hours for that day off on tuesday and then wednesdays from like seven in the morning until like seven at night thursdays a little bit what do you do for 12 hours uh meetings like we're on the field maybe two hours a day and then maybe a 45 minute walk through yeah dude just watching and then like you have your playbook that's installed every week so like you have your playbook that's like got like maybe 600 things and then each week the coaches grab like maybe 150 of it and put it all together tweak a few things and that's what you have to know for sunday's game so like nothing that's Uh... not in there won't come up but every week it's a new new mix of that stuff because your opponent's different so most of the time we're just studying like watching film and studying oh shit bro yeah Yeah. makes you it makes you Uh, wonder like how that can be applied to gaming you know like all these kids it's like vod review yeah all these kids are practicing 10 hours a day and a lot of the time that's counterproductive (laughs) exactly like if we were in the field all the time we'd be worse yeah you'd be dude like i the past because we're taking three days off for Rolling Loud. Yeah. Uh, I've been streaming like crazy the past few days. I've been trying to get like these yeah. 14, 16 hour streams. And I've only been sleeping for four hours. Yeah. And the past few days, my aim was shit. And like, I just felt yep. like, you know, everything was yep. like, I'm getting way worse. And then yep. today, my alarm didn't go off. So I ended up getting an actual eight hours of sleep. And yep. I woke up and I played and I felt like, like. I was back to prime yeah. me, you, you know, like the video today of you tunneling, right? Like you said, it was like, oh, that was very satisfying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like it's, I just, um, it's the same thing, man. Like in college, that's the other problem. They just, they drill you. You got to work out all the time, like go in and do extra shit on Saturday. Like I do just enough so that I'm ready. Like the whole philosophy in the NFL, this is the coolest part. Like you got dudes that are like 30 some years old playing and they don't, they don't do more. Like less is more. It's just like more uh, attention to detail. And so they're not burnt out by week eight when there's 17 games now. Like it's really about whatever you have to do from Monday through Saturday to be your best on Sunday. The coaches do not give a shit. If that means you open your playbook just enough to know it and to play well, they don't care. They don't give a shit if you know everything like top to bottom and everyone's role. They want you to know your job and to play well on Sundays. And that's all that matters. Mm. It, yeah, it's it it's sounds so like it's like a it's like a an, the, the ends justify the means type of mentality. Yeah, if you're not cool. gonna if you're not gonna get shit out of going in and like I could go in and like do extra sit ups and do all this extra shit, but will it take away from me sleeping, which actually helps more? Like that's the type of yeah. game you play during the season. Now, yeah. now when you so time management when you yeah. study is that studying mm-hmm. as a team always? Is that you know you no. study on your so, own? Like, they give you a playbook. Oh, go and write it. So it's normally like we'll have an install where like the coach will walk you through it one time, like on a like PowerPoint or whatever. And then for me, like, I can't sit down for three hours straight and study. So I'm like a 20 minute at a time kind of guy. You just like, show on the couch with a snack with your wife or something and you yeah, read the like, plays? Yeah, I'll go. I have 20 minutes in the hot tub. I'll bring my, my iPad. I have Sick. 20 minutes here. I can't do the four hours. Just a lot of guys, like, they try to sit and watch film for three hours. And I'm like, you're not getting anything out of that. You're just. Yeah, you, you get, it's three hours of you. It's like when you read a book when you're in school and yep. you for, by the time you're done the chapter, you're like, what did I just read? I don't remember any yeah, of it. Yeah, you got to go back. Like, you just read no, it, I'm, but you don't remember any of it. Yep. Yeah, I I've done a way better job of that now that I'm older and realize like the best way to do it. Is it obvious when people don't study? Fuck yeah. Really? Yeah. And it's like you, you never know. You like when bench at someone on a team and you're like, dude, are you you clearly didn't fucking study this week. Yeah. Bro, there so there was a first round draft pick like maybe 10, 15 years ago named Jamarcus Russell. And he was supposed to be God's gift to football, like could throw the ball 70 yards on a knee. Like was crazy <laughs> athletic. Fuck. But the coaches sent him home like back then they had cassettes like not discs like they had cassettes to watch 
sent him home a thing of blank cassettes to study his film because they didn't think he was studying. And he came back the next morning and said he had watched it all and there was nothing on him. Just blank. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Like, That's really yeah. funny. Dude, that's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> hey, can it's, I tell you uh, what happens? Can I tell you one of my? Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. After that, it's yeah. unrelated. Unrelated. So what happens to that? Like they just they kicked him off. Well, he didn't last long in the league. Like, yeah. It's, it's there's only so much you can do in the moment, but like when you gotta like renegotiate a contract, like they just won't, don't want you. Mm, like, yeah, I didn't. Yeah. No, I was gonna say. So I have an I have an uh, an unrelated football meme that I think you would appreciate. So yes, uh, so back when back when when I was in in high school and we were playing football, I had this friend named Ricky, and uh, he was the he was our kicker. But he was like, dude, like second, third string kicker. Like he never he never got on the field like ever. Like and he was like a, he was like really short. Or, like no, he wasn't short. He was like really skinny. He's like just like a lanky. You know, how, like kickers yeah. are, like usually like slender or whatever. Yeah. He was like he, he was like that, but he was like like I said, second, third string, whatever. And um. And he knows he never played, bro. Like he knew. He he yeah. just knew. So he'd get really bored on the sidelines, like really bored, and like he'd just be whatever. So he'd yeah. start stuffing candy in his like like all over his shit. Like he'd just stuff yep. like lollipops. He'd stuff candy. Like he'd just like and he like pull it out, whatever. Well, one day one of the kids got hurt. Oh and, no! Like, he was, and he wasn't paying attention. And they're like, they're like Ricky, right now, right now, you have to go, you have to go. He was like, what? So he fucking throws his helmet on. He has all this candy on him, <laughs> right? And he goes oh. out there. And 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 obviously he doesn't like he from what how I've explained him he wasn't a very like try hard like when it comes to football so he wasn't like yeah. very he wasn't the best like he, they just needed somebody out there so he goes to kick kick the ball and he just gets fucking body dude body by like three dudes and all you see is this skinny kid fly in the air and then candy fly everywhere like he's a fucking <laughs> pinata dude and that's like that's like one of my my oh, favorite memories from ever playing I love football that. bro. Bro, yeah. I'm just gonna tell you that shit still happens. Like candy? when it's cold <laughs> games, bro. When it's cold games, bro. Like in the locker room, there's like, there's like candy. There's like little snacks, little bars and shit. Like we have hand warmers and we we stuff that shit. When it's shit. what like, games? What do you call them? Cold like, games? Cold, cold. Like when it's cold and you have to have a hand warmer. Oh, okay, okay. Like, people yeah. will stuff snacks in their hand warmers before they go out. Like especially when I was a third string guy, so I wasn't even dressed out. I was just on the sideline. I would have like like uncrustables in my shit. Like hell yeah. <laughs> You get hungry, bro. Like, if you want me to be locked in and like cheering the team, bro, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna have my food. Like, I gotta have my. Now, does my that affect up. your gameplay negatively if if you get called in? Well, I I wasn't even dressed in a uniform. Like, okay, I, I right. wouldn't have done that if I was dressed. There are some guys that like, bro. Some of these dudes, some of these dudes just close their eyes, they run fast, and they hit hard. That's all they do. So they yeah, can like yeah. afford to do that. Like, I have to call plays and shit. Yeah, but you have to like, lead the team. I, I wouldn't be able to, but some of these guys, bro, they're just dogs out there. Like, just go kill somebody. They're so they made, can have candy yeah. Their shit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dude, I, I don't know why I like talking about football because I don't yeah. even like fucking, I don't even like, I'm not even into it. I'm not, I'm really not. But, but who, dude, who's your, who's your favorite player of all time? Um, Michael Vick. Wow. That's, that yeah. makes sense. I said that before the pod. Yeah. I said yeah. number yeah. seven, yeah, Michael Vick. Yeah. And oh, you, Vick. you cracked a joke that you're white Vick or something. Yeah, I said I'm not white Vic. Oh, you're not no, white Vic. Uh, we can't quote it. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not that athletic. I can get like, you know, I can make people miss, but I'm not like, I'm not going to go like run for 70 yards like him. He's nuts. But yeah, in the yeah. yard, like backyard football, bro, like I wanted to be him so bad. I was the white kid that wanted to be like so bad. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I do. I have two dogs. Two dogs are beautiful. But so I wanted to be him so bad, bro. Like I just, I, but I was never athletic enough, but I was always like quick and like to make people miss. So that's like what I took from his game watching, but Dude, he's on do a whole you, level. Do you, do you know somebody named Brian Dawkins? Yeah, fuck. Of course. It, bro. Brian Dude. Dawkins is an animal. He, Weapon X. He, he, yeah. He's, he's my favorite player of all time. I, I'm not even into it, bro, but I used to watch highlights of him just Fuck, dude! It's not even. It's not, it's not even the game. You just watch him fuck yeah. people up, bro. So yeah, he's wrecked. insane. Let me ask you a question, since Michael Vick yeah. is your favorite. First of all, the the reason I know what good about Michael Vick is because my dad used to install carpet and shit, and Michael Vick yeah. was one of his customers. He he That's he wild. made him. He wow, made him, he really? Ma yeah, he That's made sick. him. A, he made him a carpet that had a seven on it for his basement. That's That's, That's lit. really yeah. cool. That's really <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. Oh, who still has it? Um, That's wild. Cause he lived in Atlanta, you know. I obviously yeah, played for yeah. Atlanta. Um, so your number is seven. Yeah. One number. Question number one is: Is that the number you picked seven? And question number two is that the reason you picked seven? I mean, and question number two is: It were you stoked to be part of a, Atlanta Falcons uh, because of that? Yeah. So for me, like when I 
when I was picking between the few teams that I had a chance to go to, I picked Atlanta because of the guys that were there now. Like I thought like the history of Vic was really cool, but it wasn't like that wasn't my favorite team growing up. But mm. um like being able to play alongside like Julio Jones and shit, like that was just I wanted to learn from guys like him and Matt Ryan that have done it so well for so long. Yeah. Like just to kind of help me speed up my game. Um and I think it's like it's helped. I've learned a lot from those guys. But and then seven, so seven was my first number ever in football. So I don't even know like if Mike Vick was really a thing yet, but I was hyped to be seven again because of some of like the guys like that, that have played. Um, but I was six in Atlanta. I was six in college and that wasn't available here. So I was really hoping seven was, cause that was like my next favorite that I wanted to be. Yeah. So yeah. So, that, was so that number, my... that number like holds different weight. It's not just a random number. Yeah, no, it was like my, my first number ever in football was seven. Yeah. So that's pretty sweet. And then you kind of tie yeah. the thing. That's cool. That's cool to, yeah. so, so, when picking a team when it comes to the draft yeah do you get to pick the team or does the team pick you i've never i've i'm yeah. not into football you know i don't yeah. know how exactly it works so the first like there's 32 teams there's seven rounds in the draft and all of those teams have picks and they pick the players after that the players that are left over that are still seen as valuable get to pick based on a few different teams so like i had but you I have to get picked through. for the draft yeah, so the draft you get picked for, after that, you negotiate salaries and stuff with a few teams that are interested in you. Wait, so you so, weren't in the draft, right? I was I was eligible for the draft, was supposed to get drafted, but I got I didn't get picked in the, like, there was, like, maybe seven 200 rounds. or however many. Yeah, I didn't get picked in the seven rounds. So then you have teams that are still looking at you but aren't in the draft, and they've yeah. talked to your agent, so you know these teams yep. you can pick from, and then you pick? Yep. Yeah, so I picked Atlanta over Kansas City and... Um, Tampa Bay just because of the guys that Damn, I bet you're upset about I'm, that. <laughs> bro, I, like two both teams have won the Super Bowl in the three years I've been in the league. Yeah, I was gonna say I was like, <laughs> like, bro, like I was like, Ooh. like like bro, I mean I yeah, it, yeah, I can't go down that route. But anyways, uh, <laughs> bro, I was so Atlanta actually offered me like the least amount of guaranteed money. It wasn't like by that much, but I knew like as far as learning and like getting right. a head start for my career, that was the best place I could go to. Cause right. at that time, like Jameis Winston was a quarterback in with the Bucks, and Mahomes, I think, was like only going into his second year, so he wasn't like a vet that could help me learn. Yeah, like he yeah. was trying to figure this shit out for his own. So I was able to learn behind guys that like have done it for so long the right way. Um, now, dude, and let's be honest, no one saw the fucking Tampa Bay thing happening, man. Who the no, fuck? Man. Nobody did saw that? that shit. Dude, you know what's crazy? Except my friend Nick. Nick. Yeah, was about my <laughs> friend Nick, bro. My friend yeah. Nick. He actually he's really really into like sports. Like he's like like yeah. a, a an like. He would never consider himself this, but he's an amateur like sports anal analyst. Like he's like a, he like bets on it and shit. Yeah. And this motherfucker put like a, a thousand dollars that the the Bucks would win the Super Bowl before yeah. before they announced Tom Brady before that? any of that shit. That turned huh? into like twenty grand. What that turned to? Dude, it turned into like fucking twenty grand or some shit. That's like he wild. fucking yeah, he killed it. it because he did it before anyone knew what yep. was going on and shit. But but yeah, yep. no, nobody saw that coming, bro. Not yeah. not just that, but. What the fuck are the odds that he'd win the Super Bowl the first year he's on the team? Like that's crazy, dude. Yeah, dude. They he's they easy. had a good ass defense, man. The greatest of yeah. greats of of sports, dude right? Just like wins, one of the dude. greatest of greats. He just gotta be. Yeah. He just he just knows like he's never been the most talented, but in the situations that he's in, dude just knows how to maneuver through them. Like like he I don't know, he knows when to take risks, he's got he knows the game when sense. not to. He's the best IGL. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. Bro, yeah. He, he is like like yeah. you, like like who who's like right now kind of like there's a reverse 2k like he's not like the I mean, most he's like oh yeah yeah so, i guess i guess you could put reverse yeah yeah, yeah that's yeah. a good that's you a good, good comparison fraggers, actually. yeah that's a Dude good just comparison wins. like nobody's yeah. gonna pick him if you had 10 guys to pick like if you had to pick like whatever 10 players you want to start your franchise with them was gonna pick him but dude's like just gonna find ways to win so yeah. yeah, yeah it's, it's, it, it makes you realize that it's not all about you know mechanics of a game like yeah. you yes. knowing how to play the chess yeah. matters. I mean, dude, and, so, and sometimes you got to deflate a ball or two. You know, um, <laughs> I have, I have some, so I just got an invite from Booga. I'm supposed to play with him at like, like two minutes ago. Perfect. Okay, so that's fine. We'll call it if here. If you guys want to get like a wrap up thing, and then, dude, I'm down to do this whenever. Like, dude, hell yeah, we'll probably have sure. you back on with AD, awesome. and we'll fucking continue. Wait, this. you know, awesome. wait, you know Booga? Yeah, that was his I way of saying. It. That was an odd. Flex. You know Booga? You know who Edwin knows? Who do you know? Oh, his name's Tifu. <laughs> you know who else I know? Yo, you want to know who I clapped in Streamer Bowl? Huh? Tifu. You know, you know what's crazy? You know who clapped? You know, 
Gronk yeah. and Gronk knows Tifu, and by yeah. by relation, I know Gronk. So listen, yeah. you know I got shooters. When you got That's picked real. by Booga for that streamer bowl, I was like, yeah, yeah. they're winning. Kurt is the Bro. only one of these players that plays competitive, and you guys Bro, did win, didn't so you? Didn't you win that? We we, we started off really hot, bro. I got oh, sniped click solo three clutch games in a row. Or some shit. Yeah, and he won. This is ridiculous. Right? Bro, Anyways. I got... Yeah, I got sniped three games in a row. Two of them by Scope, bro. Scope fucking threw He's my good. whole shit. He's giving a sniper. Kurt, yeah. normally we have a question that awesome. we ask at the end, but I'm not going to ask you it because you're in a rush and I want you back on because this was actually really yeah. fucking fun. You're uh, good, dude. It, it's, it's cool being able to... Well, it's a signature Brainer's question, but I'm not... I want you back on, so I'm not going to yeah. ask you so that we ask you next time. Uh, it was cool getting to like talk about the dude, deeper no shit. Like we played a few games together, but uh, we definitely need to play more. Dude, I'm down to do this whenever, bro. What are your socials? Where can people find you? To hey, fucking... Kurt Benkert, K U R T B E N K E R T on everything. Boys, that'll be linked in oh, the description. Shit. If you guys made it to Appreciate the end, it. check that out. Uh, we'll see you guys later. Peace. Bro, can we Peace. do it again? Appreciate you guys.